21st of March. Uh, this is a little Shelford whale wreck, and uh, the cricket club and the parish council have got the uh, the roller back, and uh, we're looking for volunteers to drive the roller. So these are the instructions for those, for those who want to drive. What we're going to do this week: the roller is here for a week. So this weekend and the following weekend, volunteers are really needed to drive it during the weekdays. Uh, pretty much at any time if you follow the instructions in this video. And this is Chris, who is the club captain. Hello there. Bill Shelver, so he's just going to take you through the routine we've established, particularly given COVID-19. Um, and the, the key to the roller is going to be in the lockbox for the pavilion. If you want to know how to get that or how to get the key or access, you need to speak to Chris. David Jones, Neil Orkwood, or a member of the Pavilion Committee who could either get the key out of the lockbox for you or let you know how to do it. Excellent. Chris, carry on. Okay, so we need to be really careful first of all. We decided that the responsibility for wiping the machine would be to the person coming to the machine. Um, so if you haven't got any wipes and you need to see if you can get some or some sort of um, alcohol spray, worst case scenario, I think there is a bottle of antibacterial spray under the sink, uh, but try not to use all of that. In the, in the pavilion, yeah, in the pavilion. Yeah, because yeah. I saw that this morning. So we need to think about every part that we're going to touch. So we should clean down grab rails on both sides, give them a good wipe. Um, grab rail on this side as well. Now, depending on your, if you're left or right handed, you might use either of the drive handles. So the key, uh, as you take that out of the box, it might be a good idea to give it a wipe as well, because that would probably be forgotten. And I guess people could wear gloves, you know, marigold gloves or something if they yeah, wanted to. Yeah, that would be a good idea of some little rubber gloves. Um, okay, so you want to go through the grass to get yourself off the machine. Yep. The party line should be, seatbelt goes over you, not plugged in over. Without, without that, it won't go. So it won't actually go without the no, seatbelt being no. on. And the safety the bar, I think, Chris, because yeah, uh, a lot of people bar, grab yeah, that yeah. as you're driving around, particularly when you can turn corners. Yeah, that's true. Because you think that the thing's going to topple over. It's not going to topple over, but it just kind of <laughs> feels a little bit like it. There's no yeah, way it's going to topple over. It's not going anywhere. No. Okay. So, if I just start, nothing's going to happen because the emergency stops it. Right. So if the emergency stops it, does that, then probably because the emergency stops it. Yeah. It's engaged, the emergency stops. Yeah. Right. So we pull that back so it's level with the zero point. Right. Um, That's a zero you can see point. See on here, yeah. There's a zero forward reverse. Yeah. If you go too far back, the yep. reverse it bleeps. Will go on. Yeah. Okay. And so we try that again. Still nothing. Okay. So the next thing is the throttle, which is on the left hand side. You want to come around it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your throttle. It's placed in maximum at the moment. So we need to bring this back into the central neutral position. Minimum again, it, it may work, I'm not 100% sure, let's try it. No, nope. go into the centre. So that's got to be in the centre, yeah. And off the key goes again, so... Right. Okay, now Great. if you do all of that and it doesn't work, because I put them all into that position and it still didn't go. So you have to reset, take the key out, put it back in, and then go again. And we have to wait till that beeping stops because that's the charger, isn't the it? Coil. On the, yeah, the coil on the yeah. diesel engine. Yeah. Now on the pad, you don't really, you shouldn't really be touching anything on there. Now uh, you've got some vibrating functions on here. Um, I don't know if you can see these, David, but um, so that's your general. That will always be on. Um, this is vibrate. The settings for vibrate, and that tells you which drum it goes through. We don't really don't, want vibrate no. on. No. 
because a it's going to give you a massive headache yeah and it's going to push into the ground and leave lines ripple yeah, yeah ripples like yeah. a beach yeah so that, that could be a problem uh, water sprinklers you shouldn't need and there should be enough moisture in the ground yeah uh, if it does dry out during the week maybe it's a case that neil will have to come by and stick some water in the tank yeah fuel showing up to two thirds so we should be fine for fuel um, if it looks like it's run out of fuel, you should contact Neil, I guess, yeah, Neil Oakwood over Neil's, the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's closest, he'll be the best place to do it. Um, he's got a horn on there. Yeah. Um, and does the flashing light automatically come on? Not that you could see it on a day yeah, morning like this, but that comes do. on automatically, does it? It should do, but there, there, there is, is a, a switch there is a for switch that. switch for it here, which is the obvious one with the light, flashy light. Yeah. And the only other thing you need to see, and I'll tell you now before I start it, because you'll be able to hear me, is so this this button here, can you see this one lit up? Does that show up? Yep. Okay, so that's that's your brake, that's your electronic brake. Right. So once it's started, if you try to go and that's on, engaged, it won't go anywhere. So you have to press that. And to shut it all down, Chris, you basically put the the uh, drive, the gear yeah, just into put it neutral. Yeah, it's in neutral, probably in neutral. And remove Mark the key. Remove the key. And that's and it. when you're reversing make sure you're always looking behind you and as far over as you can because you want to see a dog or an animal always reverse slowly and always try and do your rolling in a forward pattern if you can yeah um because it's easier to keep in a straight line and safe yeah. so. any advice because when i did it last year i did a sort of circular i went round and round but kind of getting nearer and nearer the, the square yeah i think if it with the ground conditions you can pretty much go in any direction you want um I would say you're easier, if there's different people doing it, you might be better covering an area and then telling the next person, person what you've, you've done. done. Yeah. So you could cover, you could cut it into sections. So this fourth corner, the quadrant there, the entire corner, the edge yeah. here. So, so basically use, the, use, the square, use the square as a way of dividing it up. Yeah, yeah into uh, eight sections, which I think would be the yeah. most logical way of doing it. Yeah. And just in case people think we're mad as to why we're doing this, this isn't, this yeah. isn't just about playing cricket because there is unlikely to be any no. until at least the end of June. But actually it's because we've had a lot of problems with chafer grubs and we found after we did this last year, uh, last summer, we had far less problems with chafer grubs. And of course it also compacts the soil so it makes it better. There's a lot of rabbit infestation here so it helps with that. Makes it more difficult. So that, that's why we do it because it's actually a pretty cost effective way of um, both preparing the outfield for the cricket but also um, dealing with those pests and issues. So thanks Chris.